This episode is brought to you by Newman Center for the Performing Arts. Friday, April 12th, see Brooklyn-based dance ensemble Urban Bushwomen's groundbreaking work, Legacy, Lineage, and Liberation. Centering women and members of the African diaspora, Legacy, Lineage, and Liberation is an evening of dance that transcends genre, illuminates overlooked perspectives, and contributes to our national conversation around equity and justice. Get your tickets now at newmancenterpresents.com. That's newmancenterpresents.com. Today on CityCast Denver, it's springtime in Mile High. Will we see more snow? Probably. But the bulbs are sprouting and the trees are growing new leaves? And what about you? What new things are you excited about this April? Fortunately, we at CityCast Denver know about all the coolest stuff to eat, drink, and do this month, and we picked our faves just for you. Today is Monday, April 1st. I'm Paul Caroli, in for Bree Davies, and here's what Denver's talking about. Hello, everyone. I'm here with newsletter editor Adrian Gonzalez. Hey, Adrian. Good morning, Paul. And producer Olivia Julev. Welcome to CityCast Denver. Good afternoon, Paul. It's afternoon. <laughs> it's always morning for me. Yeah, well, that's Morning fair. person. I feel like we always record in the morning. Every listener probably thinks it's morning. I mean, they can listen at different times of the day also. Good night, Paul. But <laughs> Good evening. Good night. Good morning. Have a good sleep. Hope yeah, you're doing well. If Should we start is, again? Is this good? If this is your <laughs> ASMR bedtime routine, good night. <laughs> <laughs> Let us lull you, lull you to sleep with some recommendations for the beautiful month of April. A fine month in Denver. A silly month, a good month. You know, 420, April Fools. I'm excited, y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too, Adrian. Let's get right into it here. We got a bunch of categories. Uh, we're going to go through them, make a bunch of picks. We got something to do slash experience. Then we're going to talk about something to eat and or drink. No, or drink. Can't do both um, unless anyone has a smoothie wreck. Uh, and then we're going to wrap up with something spring because, you know, that is the time of the year we're at spring. Uh, so something to do slash experience in Denver in April. Olivia? Yes. So this one, I keep getting Instagram ads for this and I think my algorithm's pretty good. I think they've got me figured out pretty well. Okay. I will say. <laughs> so I'm honestly really wanting to go to ThriftCon. Mm, um, yes. ThriftCon Denver is um, Saturday and Sunday, April 27th and 28th at the National Western Complex. And I have never been to one of these before, but um, on their website, they say that it is the largest traveling vintage market in the world. It's wow. huge. I went last year and it yeah. is incredible. Tell I mean, us if you about like it. thrifting, if you like digging through stuff, I love digging making new friends, stuff. they give you a little baggie. Aww. It's it's incredible. It's huge. Yeah. You know me. I'm obsessed with clothes. So Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So you have to pay to get in? Yes. Okay. And then okay, interesting. Yeah, I talked to a guy who did um who does like thrift resale stuff, which is apparently a very competitive world because yes. he did not want to do an interview and give yep. up all of his secrets. Yep. Um but he 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 talked up uh, ThriftCon. Yeah, and and that's kind of I I figured you had been Adrian just knowing you, um, but I was I kind of wanted to get your take on it. I'm like, is it more? Is it resale con? Because I mean, that's kind of the vibe I'm getting. Somewhat, it's a mixture. You have a lot of like new, very curated, not new, obviously they're vintage, but like curated, super. I mean, isn't it all curated though? Yeah, yeah, but there's some some shops that doesn't feel like okay, I'm gonna step in here and spend four hundred dollars on a yeah. jacket. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's there's some decent stuff. Whatever you're into, you're gonna find it. If you're into really cool old trucker hats, there's a spot for you. If you're into like salvaged denim, you're gonna find some stuff. So it's great at whatever whatever level of vintage you enjoy. Great, a lot of levels. I'm definitely a I like picking through the weird stuff. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm more of a thrift store person than a than an antique mall or consignment. I I prefer to like deal with the weird stuff too cuz mm. I don't know. I guess that's just who I am, but I I do the other day I went to a consignment store and I I found some stuff I like there. So maybe I'm turning over a new leaf. But I definitely want to go to this. It's like like you said, I want to make friends. I want to do all the stuff, so I'm down. I'm excited. Great choice. Sounds yes. great. Sounds yes. great. Um Adrian, my choice um 
um, I hesitate to recommend this, but look, I, I love baseball. I wish we had a professional baseball team here in Denver that we could we could see. <laughs> but if you do like uh, professional baseball, there are some professional teams that come into Coors Field every year. So if you want to see that, um, I'm a baseball nerd, so I love to just sit and like keep score, yeah. yell at the refs or at the uh, umpires. It's it's great, but no judgment if you like to just go and hang out, have a beer. Again, make new friends. Uh, honestly, it's probably what the Munfords want you to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so yeah, it's baseball season, man. Go go to a baseball game. The Munfords, of course, the the owners of the team. Adrian, I got to ask you, because I saw a game last year after they impo uh, implemented the new rules to try to speed up the game. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about those? Okay. I mean, I'm not like a purist on baseball. I also <laughs> like... I'm Latin American, so we, we play baseball at a different pace than America. So I feel like in this country, it's so like you have to abide by the rules. Don't flip the bat. Don't show off. Like, no, screw all that. You want I, like I like grandiose. that. And, yeah, I don't mind. I mean, honestly, even as a baseball lover, there's only so much I can do. I can't sit and watch something for three and a half hours. And I'm saying that as a NASCAR fan. So, <laughs> you know, there's, there's just at some point it's like, all right, that's enough. Uh let me put a hypothetical to you. Let's say you're walking out to home plate. Uh, you're up to bat. What's your walkout song? Oh, I've had so many of them. I think I think currently it'd be like a either a Charlie Crockett song or a Bad Bunny song. Charlie Crockett. I love Charlie Crockett. Love He's coming Charlie. to Red Rocks this summer. Hell yeah. I'm going to be there. We went to see him at uh, the Mission like last month, I think it oh, was. Yeah? Incredible. I mean, I want to be friends with that guy. Yeah. He's very cool. Paul, what's what's your choice? Let's... Uh, what do you want to do or doing? experience in April? Uh, I was afraid you were going to take this one, Adrian, because <laughs> when I saw this, I was like, this is interesting. This is, it's a movie thing. Um, yes. and, and it's interesting to me because I saw uh, or I listened to um, Adam McKay, the filmmaker. Mm -hmm. He has a podcast. I listened to an episode of his show a few years ago where he told the story of Hattie McDaniel, who's this uh, – a uh, very famous actress, a black woman from like 100 years ago is when she was in movies. She's from Denver and, and the podcast told her story. Um, but uh, the, the movie she's most famous for is is Gone with the Wind, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of controversial now. And, and honestly, she was kind of a controversial figure in her day because she was yeah. famous for playing these mammy stereotype yeah. roles. Yeah. Um, so for historical interest, uh, Gone with the Wind is playing uh, for its 85th anniversary in Estes Park at the Historic Park Theater on April 7th and 10th. And the Park Theater itself is historic. It was built in, in 1913. So so as a, as a film lover, as a history lover, I think that sounds pretty good to me. I've never seen Hattie McDaniel. I've always heard she's, she was a great actress, and I've never even seen this movie. So this seems like the right time to do it. Yes, I'm down for movies anytime, even bad movies, uh, <laughs> except for maybe a couple couple exceptions, but uh, like Madame Webb. I don't think I'll ever see that again. But uh, it's just fun, man, just to go to the movies. I think it's it's worth seeing that movie and saying that you saw it, have your opinions about it. So yeah, yeah that's another good choice. Put it up on the big screen. Good pick. $12 per ticket is the cost of that nice. one. Not maybe I'll bad. see you there. This episode is brought to you by the Colorado Wine Board. Because the wine community here is like surprisingly robust. I mean, think about Bigsby's Folly and Infinite Monkey Theorem here in Denver alone. And there are urban wineries all across the Front Range. Then there's the Western Slope, Peonia, I mean, Palisade, hello, Palisade Wine, are you kidding me? It didn't used to really be a thing, but from what I hear, it's very much a thing now. There are more than 165 wineries across Colorado to explore, and they produce all sorts of wine that reflect our unique culture and climate. So finding a label that you're going to love is easy, no matter where your adventure takes you. Discover it for yourself and support local winemakers at coloradowine.com. That's coloradowine.com. This episode is brought to you by ShipStation. If you run an e-commerce business, you know how much work it takes to produce something great while dealing with complicated shipping issues. That's why over 130,000 companies have turned to ShipStation, an innovative tool that allows you to focus less on shipping and more on building your brand. With ShipStation, you can manage orders, label printing, reporting, and customer service on one easy-to-use dashboard. You'll reduce warehouse costs with reliable enterprise solutions and save thousands on shipping costs with discounts up to 89% off. Plus, you can effortlessly import orders from everywhere you sell online. So, turn your shipping challenges into opportunities for growth. 
Go to ShipStation.com and use code POD to sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com, code POD. All right, next category, something to eat slash drink in Denver or the surrounding area in April. How about I go first this time? Do it. I'm going to go first. Let them cook. Use my my host privilege. Uh, so th- I don't I don't know if everyone's going to be in- into this, but I love novelty foods and drinks. Like anything that's new or like different, I'm there. I want to try it. And when I saw the press release from New Belgium Brewing about their new partnership with Tombstone Pizza, <laughs> the frozen pizza brand, on a beer what called the Voodoo Ranger <laughs> I Pizza A. Oh God. <laughs> I knew. I have, I have to taste it. I don't think I'm going to like it, but I have to taste it. Uh, they're releasing it. It's a small batch. Uh, probably a good thing um, on, on April 7th, National Beer Day. Wow. But listen to this description. This is hilarious. Brewed with tomato powder, Ugh. oregano ex- <laughs> <laughs> oregano extract, and other natural flavors. Uh, this brew is a blend of all the flavors of a pizza, a crispy crust, tangy tomato sauce, savory herbs and spices, and a finishing pepperoni kick of heat. Wow. So are they going to get that like freezer burned, bottom of your freezer taste that's kind of signature? The signature tombstone taste? Yeah. I hope so. Okay. I hope well, so. Report back on that because that's that's the flavor <laughs> note I'm looking for. How not that bizarre that New Belgium would partner with Tombstone Pizza? I mean, like, we've seen mismatch. we've seen weirder collabs. The the nacho cheese, uh, weed cartridge. Oh yeah, there's right. that's a oh, good example. One of the bagel places did a a cream cheese um, weed cartridge recently too. There's there's been some weird people are getting adventurous with these interesting these crossovers. I don't know. <laughs> well, this one this one caught my interest. I can't wait to try it. Uh, <laughs> Olivia, how about you go next? Well, on the on the topic of weed, I guess, hey, <laughs> segue. This is this is the four twenty. Segue. Month. Yeah. So I, I want to celebrate four twenty the right way. I want to eat nachos, Hell and yeah. I really do need our listeners' help for this because I need a call out because I just haven't. I don't know. I haven't found my nacho place here yet. I've had like illegal pizza and just some other just like more chain places, but like. I know I've been looking on Reddit and stuff. I know there's some there's some places that people feel strongly about for their nachos. And I know we do Mexican food really well. So like I don't know what category nachos fall into, but you know, I feel like there's components of a lot of different things in them. And I wanna hear where I should get my four twenty nachos from. What what type of nacho do you like do you like a big pile like overloaded with different stuff or do you like the more classic where like each chip has a specific amount of specific toppings on it is is that a thing yeah I like yeah. the original nacho was just like a tortilla chip with a single slice of jalapeno and um, cheddar cheese i like the on pile top. i like the pile nice with the sour cream like a glob of sour cream yeah on top. so i'm really thinking of there was this place in kansas city that i would get they called them the espinachos. Mm-hmm. It was like espinaca dip on it and like so much good stuff. I don't know. It was this little brewery in Kansas City that had them and I just can't stop thinking about them and I want that. So I just want a pile of nachos with a bunch of stuff on it that's not super spicy because I'm like really, <laughs> really white and I can't handle it. So that's where I'm at. That's where I'm at for my 420 nachos. Hmm. That's what I love about nachos. It's just a vessel. You could build your You own can adventure. do anything. It's your yeah. canvas. Yeah, exactly. So Shout I'm out calling... to Ignacio Nacho, the, the inventor, the original inventor of nachos. Shout out to him. Y'all know that story? No. It was like a whole accident. Tell it was us. a It was an immigrant in Texas that was like a waiter at a restaurant and it was late in the shift. The chef had left, but this group of women came in and wanted something. So he went in the back and just put together this, this mishmash of like, we've got chips. I can't turn on the stove anymore. So I'm just going to pour some cheese on it and some jalapenos. Here you go. Wow. Wow. Well, uh, the nachos. That I mean, wow. that's the most 420 story. Yeah. Yeah. So that's nachos what I'm, for 420. that's what I'm doing for 420. So please send me Please send me your recs for nachos. I got one for you. Okay. Esther's. Esther's. They've got a few locations. Okay. One, uh, one in Virginia Village near me, one up in, um, what is it? Central Park, Montclair. 
somewhere over there. Anyway, their nachos have like pulled pork on them. Ooh. It's not really like a classic. I wouldn't even, it doesn't even strike me as like particularly Mexican. It's That's pulled fine. pork and I pickled just, red onions. I and, just like a lot of stuff on them. Okay. Like a concoction. <laughs> Nice. Adrian, do you have a, a go-to nacho? No, but I've had the ones at Esther. And I don't think that, you know, that's not a traditional mm-hmm. Mexican food necessarily. So I think you yeah. should build it the way that you want. I yeah. like a barbecue one with some Ooh. pulled pork, mm. yeah. some nice chicken, a lot of jalapenos. So well, yeah. maybe go try for, them all. Maybe for you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Adrian, something to eat slash drink in Denver. Well, in speaking April. of spicy... <laughs> Dude, growing up in, in Juarez, we you know go to the street markets and a very popular street food is, uh, they call it fruta preparada, prepared fruit, mm. uh, aka fruta con chile. So essentially, it's just a bunch of fresh fruit cut up. You put it in a cup, you put chamoy in it, chili powder, lime, incredible. Nothing screams April, spring to me like like one of those cups. Hmm. Um, you could find them out here. You could go to something like uh, La Michoacana, which is where they sell like paletas and chips and all this other crazy stuff. It's also super easy to make at home. So for Olivia, obviously they, they tend to be super spicy when you go buy them <laughs> at one of these places, even for me. Um, so you could literally just pick your favorite fruit. I recommend jicama. That's one of the yes, better ones. I nice and jicama. a good crunch to it. And then add a little bit of lime, whatever you, you want to add to it. Super easy to make mm-hmm. at home. Sit outside of a patio. This is also, I feel like, such a um, universal love language is cutting up fruit for someone you love. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's this kind of a random thing. But like, if someone just brings you a little thing, be like, I cut up some fruit for you, that just means they love you in that my is. book. That's so romantic. And depending on the fruit, they may love you more. Like <laughs> yeah, if they're kind if they of a brought, banana, that's like, okay. Yeah, but if they brought a you- A mango? Yeah. If mm. they hi, a pineapple, that's a lot of effort. Yeah. You throw a kiwi in there. We're getting married. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So. Uh, all right. Let's move on to our final category here. Something spring. That's our random category this month. Just something spring because it's spring. Olivia, you want to start? Yeah. <laughs> so when I was thinking about spring, I've been doing a little bit of spring cleaning, mm. um, which is not as bad as it sounds. It's more been like spring um parting with things I don't need anymore. So I've been, you know, donating a lot of stuff and, you know, deciding what I do and don't need anymore. Um, And I've been ending up at um, a lot of thrift stores getting rid of stuff. But I ended up at this thrift store I totally forgot about and um, now we'll never forget about again, the Craft Box in Wheat Ridge. Hmm. It's this really cool place that it's a thrift store dedicated to craft supplies. So if you like many of us in this world have ever picked up a craft and then bought all the supplies for it and then realized I don't like this craft or I'm not going to do this craft. This is a really cool place that you can just go and donate that stuff. So then people like me can go and buy those supplies for a lot cheaper for whatever new interest they have. So I've just been thinking of this cycle of like, you know, getting rid of stuff and then picking up new things. So I've been getting rid of stuff and then also, you know, heading to these stores and picking up some new things for the spring, new crafts to try. And I don't know. It's kind yeah, of defeats, very spring. I love that. It kind of defeats the purpose of spring cleaning. If I'm just like, you know, kind of going and I'm like, Oh, I'm going to drop stuff off at the thrift store. And then I come away with like a whole bag of new yeah. stuff. But, <laughs> you know, it's new to me. So yeah. I've, I've been loving that place. They have like every craft and it's a, it's a great cause. I know I interviewed them forever ago and I remember, I'm pretty sure they said that they started it because like they just, weirdly saw this surplus of like um when older people were dying they had like a lot of you know whatever their hobby was like craft supplies you know whatever Mm. your thing is you probably have a lot of it and so like their spouses didn't know what to do with it and then they started this place so they could donate it and other people could do crafts for cheaper cool good story what's it called again the craft box it's in wheat ridge craft box Box in wheat ridge yep love that you ever been to a recreative no but i just got a recommendation for that this week it's another good one yeah Hmm. yeah yeah definitely check those out cool place do stuff for less Love it. Love it. Marie Kondo season. <laughs> well, kind of the opposite for me, but <laughs> I'm hey, trying. Joy, so. You got a lot of stuff that brings you joy. I do. I'm very joyous. <laughs> Adrian, your turn. All right. Well, the sun's out. Everyone's thighs are out. I want to be outside <laughs> in April. That's where I want to be. And, you know, one thing that I used to do a lot before uh, before the madness of 2020 was just go to the park, go to Cheeseman, go to City Park, mm. set up a picnic, play some weird alternative sports. Um, it's one of my favorite things to do. Just put like a little a little lunch, 
bottle of wine. Um, so that's my recommendation. Go out and have a picnic. Even if it's just by yourself, make some friends, hang out, invite some friends, uh, or maybe even get into uh, sports. I love softball. Yeah, what are the baseball. weird sports though? Well, what's the one where you you have like this weird ball and you bounce it into a tiny trampoline? Oh, I know spike exactly ball. what you're talking spike about. Ball? Is that what it's spike called? Ball? I think it's called spike ball. Yeah, find your nearest bro at a park and, yeah, and ask bros. him what he's playing. It's always bros. Yeah. <laughs> Cheeseman will... Park, there is some spike ball. I went playing. on a picnic <laughs> last weekend, right before it snowed. Extremely nice. Yeah, more picnics. I think we more all need picnics. more picnics. It's it's frolic season. It's, a, it's Heck official. Yeah, 2024, we frolicking. Yeah, we gallivanting. <laughs> Uh, all right, I, I guess I'll bring us home here. Something springy for me. Well, one one is a PSA. Uh, our newsletter editor, Peyton Garcia, reminded me before we recorded, street sweeping season starts in April. And so <laughs> this is just something <laughs> that we should all be aware of. You know, move your car if you need to. Read those street signs. Don't get dinged. Those are fat tickets. They are. Yes. Yeah, that's not fun. When I first moved here, I got one because I didn't know about street sweeping. Oh, when I used to bucks. live in Cap Hill, my God. Oh, yeah. I gave the city so they much They should money. have my name in like a public building for how many <laughs> yeah, tickets I paid. I need a bench. <laughs> <laughs> um, but my real recommendation here for something spring is uh, it's kind of along the lines of yours, Olivia. Just like start something new, you know, get interested in something. Um, it, for me, this is something I've been interested in a long time, uh, which is the the bus rapid transit system that's coming to uh, to Denver very, very soon. Construction on the, the first line, the Colfax line is starting over this summer. Uh, and CityCast Denver is moderating a panel with some really interesting uh, experts and insiders who are working on this project here in Denver. We're doing that on April 25th down at DU, uh, right on campus in the Community Commons, room 1700. I've been talking to the panelists, hearing their stories. These are like really interesting people that know their stuff. So if you've been hearing us talk about BRT on the show and you're curious to learn more and maybe you wanna meet some people who are working on the project, Maybe meet meet a new friend. Meet us. Meet us. Hey, you can meet us. I'll be there. I'll be there in the back, managing the gear. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's going to be a really great event, and I hope you all come out. I'll be there. It's a great nice. recommendation. I'll be there. Nice. When was it? April twenty fifth. Highlight morning. of my month. It's a Thursday, so you might have to take work off. But okay, I'll take work off. It'll be worth it. Hey, oh. wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> um, Adrian, Olivia, thanks so much for joining me. Hey, thank you. Thanks, guys. We want to hear from you, too. What are you excited about doing or eating or drinking in April around Denver? And where is Olivia going to find those good nachos? Is there cool stuff going on that we missed? We want to hear about it. The What's Hot hotline is open. Leave us a voicemail or send us a text at 720-500-5418. Again, the What's Hot hotline is open at 720-500-5418. That's all for today here on CityCast Denver. If you enjoyed the show, why not take a minute to tell someone parked in the wrong place about us? Rate the show wherever you get your podcasts and subscribe to our morning newsletter and learn more about us at denver.citycast.fm. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. See you then. Today on City... You know, I'm going to close the door.